Hello everyone, it's Craig here again. Today, me and Monty are going to Cullen up on the Murray Coast. We're going to have a little walk through the town, head down to the harbour, along the beach, up to the cliff to go and see the Bowford Rock. We're going to go along the viaducts and back through the town again. So Cullen um, is a, a great place. I've stayed there hundreds of times due to um, my family having a house um, on the main street. Um, Visited there during Christmas, Easter, summer and October and various other times in between. Um, has some great memories for me and I just want to sort of reminisce a little bit and take you guys there as well. So yeah, meet us in Cullen. Hi guys, um, so we have made it to Cullen. Uh, we are going to have a little walk around the town. Uh, we're going to go down the right hand side of Seafield Street first. Um, head towards the harbour along the beach and hopefully get to Bowfield Rock up to Portnockey. Um, and then along the viaduct and then back along the other side of the town and I'll also point out a few things um, back when so I was growing up that I sort of remember as well and um, Monty has never been to um, Bullfield Rock before but hopefully if the tide is out we will get there and yeah join us so we've just parked off the main Seafield Street it's called and um, so down this way is the sort of caravan site and along this road here is the tennis courts and also Bowling Alley, Bowling Green, sorry, Bowling Green. And around this way is the Cullen Centre, or the, the Cullen um, Community Centre. And um, this road on the left is the main road, Seafield Street. So this is the exit road, um, sort of um, more inland. And then down this way is down towards the, the sea. And this, this house here has sort of a um, strong place in my heart. It's actually owned by my uncle and I'll explain more as we go. Hopefully it's um, not too loud here, you can sort of hear me. Um, so we're just sort of walking down the hill. You can sort of see the, the sea and the viaduct in the distance. Just a few mostly holiday homes down this right hand side. See here, this is actually what was a church. Um, it now seems to be like a, a gallery or antique centre um, and it's open from Thursday to Sunday 11 to 4 p.m. We'll just keep on heading down. stopped here this is the Seafield Arms so this is actually closed a number of years ago for renovation it's sort of undergone like a multi-million pound reservation uh, I have gone for afternoon tea here before and quite recently lunch I would highly re recommend it and they do do weddings and um, hotel stays as well just so often this direction here are some public toilets and um, we'll just continue going down the hill sorry the site So we're still uh, walking down the town. Again, these are sort of just holiday homes, I think, or could be in people's homes. Very popular in the summer this town, um, mainly due to its location. What is a Cullen collectible shop, which um, over the years, I think it has been a similar shop as before. And then here seems to be a takeaway. I remember, um, I think it was this building uh, years ago, it used to be called um, Puddle Duck Patch. Um, it was like a cafe sort of um, shop and then we're going to go under the viaduct okay so we've just came under the viaduct which is the old train line and now we're going to sort of head down towards the harbour the tide looks to be out at the moment which is um, hopefully a good sign for us uh, walking along the coast so just over to the left is sort of the Cullen Sea Town and above that is the viaduct which as I said is the old tra train line and we will be walking across that on the way back from our walk along to Parnocky, which is on the cliff, cliff just above there. So we've just sort of turned the corner there. This is the harbour. I remember just in the distance there, the sort of harbour wall um, over to the right hand side. I remember coming here as a child um, or even like a teenager when we used to visit here quite often, uh, jumping off sort of the, 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 the wall there. Um, maybe quite scary to start with. But um, 
after a while you sort of got used to it and you sort of just loved it in the end. And you can't go this way, we're actually going to go along the sea, uh, so along the seashore, so we'll go this way. So we can go this way, I think this is maybe a route to Finletter Castle, and um, you can also walk along the cliffs here as well, uh, the other direction. There is also a pet cemetery here, and what's called Giant Steps, which is half, one and a half miles away. Here is sort of the harbour, and that is the town or little village of Portnocky. There is uh, quite a lot of sand here as well, so you can use it as a beach area. And there's some boats ashore there as well. And there is like a, a small walkway as well. I think Monty's quite intrigued as to the water. We'll maybe see, we might let him in the water at some point uh, and further along the shore. Or the sea, the, the sand I should say. But yeah, it looks like a nice day now. We're just going to um, walk along this bit here, just right along the, the sea town, and we'll, we'll pick up the video further along. So we've just walked um, down the hill, and we have had a view of the harbour itself. So this is a different view of the harbour. So we're just getting a bit closer to the sea. Definitely smell it now. And There's a sign about uh, the, the fishing that goes on here in the village, or in the town. And it is possible also to see dolphins in this area. People also might recognise the name Cullen from what is Cullen soup. Um, so Cullen soup is made from haddock, onion and potatoes. And it's sort of famous soup that was sort of made in the town and I think it's probably eaten worldwide now. And every single year, um, the town hosts the sort of the annual Cullen Skink World Championships, where sort of everyone, uh, people come from, you know, all over the place to make their own version of Cullen Skink. And, I'm oh, sorry, Monty, you just stopped there. And uh, sort of, um, obviously, they, they crown a winner at the end of the day, crowning them sort of the, the best maker of Cullen Skink. So we're just heading towards um, the, the sort of the beach area now, and there's a sign here of the Royal Oak, which um, is a I think I think it's an hotel and um, also a pub. It's just over to the the left hand side, so there's a sign there, and it is just sort of around the back of these houses. And we're just going to have to cross a bridge in a minute, which I'm going to try and remember a memory about what happened there once when I we walked across that as a family. We're just about to cross this bridge here, and um, the water does lead into the sea. I remember uh, my brother actually on Boxing Day a number of years ago uh, tried to cross this water but it was absolutely freezing and he fell in and my uncle had to rescue him. Um, I don't think he was in much danger um, of sort of floating into the sea but I think it was the water was quite choppy um, back then but yeah he survived to tell the tale. Beautiful view of the viaduct. This is where we just came from, with a uh, view of the viaduct to the right hand side. So there is quite a large car park here. We've just decided to park in the town because I wasn't sure how busy it would be. But yeah, there's plenty of options for parking. And just off the left here is Colin Golf Club. Now these rocks here are quite famous. Um, I believe they're called the Three Kings, where there's um, there's one here, there's one here, and there's another one just off to the left. Obviously, over the years, they've um, sort of faded and eroded over time. And I believe there still is a pub in the in the town of Cullen that is called the Three Kings, which we maybe point out later on when we sort of return back into the town. But now we're um, going to go along the beach. They obviously offer um, surf lessons, paddleboard lessons, and coastal viewing as well. On the left hand side is the dog club, and there are public toilets available just in that white building there. That is the, the third king, or the first king it could be. And this is the 
Murray Coast Trail. It is very windy. I don't know how well my voice is getting picked up on the on the camera itself. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to hear me. You can see the sun in the distance there as well. So we must be just under some clouds. But yeah, we're going to just continue on our way. And yeah, we will pick up the video in a little while. And going back to the, the start of the video where I pointed out the house on Seafield Street and I said that was owned by my uncle. It still is owned by my uncle. Um, he's almost owned it for, I think, around 20 years, maybe just short of 20 years. And for, I think, 10 or 11 Christmases, um, a lot of the family used to visit there, um, either for two weeks um, or just a few days at a time. My, my our family, so my mum and dad, my brother and sister, we visited pretty much for two weeks straight from Christmas over the New Year period. And I think it has seven bedrooms, which, you know, it does hold a lot of people within it. And we had some great times um, visiting the house. We haven't visited as much recently because it's now let out as a, a holiday home. And as you can imagine, a holiday home in Cullen is very, 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 very popular. And the amenities in the, in the house itself um, are great with a, with a pool table, a table tennis table, as I said, seven bedrooms and many beds as well. Very popular. So we used to come here um, every Christmas, um, even over half term, over the Easter holidays, over summer and over the October holidays as well. And in the summer especially, we used to visit the beach um, along the shoreline here and sort of just make camp for the day going in the sea and I mean the house is only a 10 minute walk sometimes you would take the car but other times you would just walk and yeah it was a it was a great time it's still, still quite early in the morning so the, the beach is quite quiet itself which is quite good because uh, Monty is sort of free to do what he wants he's still in the lead but he's not being bothered by any other dogs uh, but yeah he's having a lot of sniffs he does love the water but he hasn't been tempted to go in just yet that might be changing by the time we get closer to making the turn around the cliff in fact we'll maybe see if monty wants to dip his paws in let's see how we get on here i think he's almost fearless when it comes to water now not going to um, let him off the lead, we're just going to keep him on. I don't know if he can swim. Monty, having fun? Remember last year, last summer we took him along to another beach which is uh, along the coastline at Sand End. That was his first time ever seeing the, the sea and why my, he had a great time there. So I'm just going to go back this way. So over this way is the town, at uh, the harbour. So this direction here, um, I think if you go along the coast, you end up going to the town of Banff. Town of Banff, as you say. And this way, sort of around the corner here, is the town of Bucky. And in the distance there, you can't see it now, is Port Nocky, which we will be visiting. They do have a coastal trail, which takes us back along the viaduct. And you can't see it anymore, but on the left-hand side is the, the golf course. Remember a number of years ago, you see water flowing? From this bit here you can sort of see it maybe it must still happen at certain times you still have to sort of jump or skip over it right now we just get to get to walk over it i'm just gonna keep on going from where we parked the car earlier as well and um, i did time it uh, for distance wise so from the um seafield place is the the um street we parked the car on just off of seafield uh, street which is now two kilometers from this from that point to now this point Want he's being brave again. Once you let him in the water, sometimes you can't let him out. We, when we get off to the top of the cliff as well, cliff as well, we'll be stopping for a little bit of a break. Um, I have got his water bowl with him as well, which we'll be stopping to get a drink and a snack as well. Now I'm being dragged into the water.
absolutely soaking. Covered in sand as well. I'd like to think what my car is going to look like when we get, get in. And also here, yeah, again, looks like we'll have to cross this bit of water. What have we got up here? It seems to be a bit drier this way. It's a golf club, uh, golf course just up here. But we're going to cross this way. There we go. There we go. It's quite a clear day today as well. You can see a, a ship in the distance there, but you can't really see anything, any sort of land in the distance. I think because this direction on the Murray coast is sort of pointed towards maybe Norway or the Shetland or Orkney Islands. Um, can't see sort of anything in the distance there, apart from sort of the, the town itself. We're just going to make our way across here. A little bit wet underfoot, but we're all right, we're fine. I think you can maybe go along this way as well, and in between the cliffs. The tide is out at the moment, so it will allow us to get along this way as well. But just be mindful of the fact that tides do change, so best look up at the internet when the tide's out and when it goes in. So we have just made it from that direction here. I'm just gonna go around to the left. There's quite a bad smell here of um, bird, basically. Yeah, there's a, a cave here, I believe. See all the, the seagulls in the distance making all the noise and all the smell. We have a little look and see what's in this cave. Now I do remember coming here as a child as well on the sort of family walks when we visited the town. It doesn't go too deep, but I guess people maybe do hang out here. You see there's some inscribing on the wall there as well. Even maybe some even started another fire here as well. And that's as that's as far as it goes. Just there. And yeah, we're gonna gonna head out. Go towards both of the rock. So we just came from that direction and um, with the, the cave on the left hand side, just continuing on the path. So what we're going to be walking up to soon is the Bullfiddle Rock. Um, so the Bullfiddle Rock is a natural sea arch which resembles a bow, or fiddle and bow I should say. And there's a narrow path here which I'm just going to have to pull Monty in a little bit as well. Monty! Don't want him going into the water. Uh, so this path isn't very accessible for people maybe in wheelchairs um, or less able. So just be mindful of that as well, quite uneven. But yeah, we're just going to gradually go up, up the path, or down, down and up the path. So again, we're going up, we're going down, and we're going to go up that way. Monty loves the sniffs. Seems to be a lot calmer around this way as well. We're less exposed to the, the elements, but there was the wind earlier. So hopefully you can hear me a lot better than what you did a little while ago. Some reason this area just reminds me of the film The Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I was visiting Disneyland Paris and Disney World. This rock here just reminds me of um, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, um, specifically at Disneyland Paris. The path itself seems to be okay as well, not too overgrown. This to be relatively well maintained. It's very much a steep climb up here. Lots of steps, and as I said, very steep. A little bench here for anyone to have a sit on for a rest. Don't have too many more steps to get up to though. Almost there.
So we've uh, made it up to the top of the hill. This, so what we just did was um, called Jenny's Well, which is also towards Cullen. This is a little seatown village of Port Nocky. We're gonna just go and explore a little bit. So we've just stopped for a minute. We're just gonna give Monty a drink. Hopefully he will have some. Monty, no drink? Monty? Monty is gonna have a little bit of a drink here. I think there's too many sniffs. Monty, want a drink? Go and have a drink. Monty. Oh, he smells all the treats in the bag, that's what it is. We'll get his treat first, will we? See if I can get a treat. Treat. Here you go. You got another one? Now sit again. Go. Right, get a drink. Get a drink. Go on. Get a drink. Just gonna zoom in there. So that is a, the golf course. The building there is the Cullen Bay Hotel. Zoom out a little bit. There's the viaduct. There's the town itself, so we've came from that direction to see more of the, the coastline there. And Monty's just having a bit of a break. Say hello to everyone. Hello. So just there is where we sat there on the benches. We just came along this path. See more of the coastline there. And we're gonna come down this way. There are people taking photographs and walking their dogs as well. So we'll just uh Sorry, keep quiet and yeah, we won't bother them at all. So we just we've just came from this direction and we're just on this sort of cliff edge at the moment, walking towards both for the rock. We'll almost be there in just a few moments' time. We'll get a really good view of it. Um, I think it is covered in seagulls, so it's gonna be, be a little bit noisy, but we're just gonna sort of take in the, the view, take in the sounds, and then we're gonna head back along the viaduct which I will show you um, towards Cullen and then we'll head home. So this is what is called Bowfiddle Rock. Um, maybe you won't be able to see quite what it looks like until we turn around the corner but we're doing that uh, to get a better view. We definitely don't want to be falling down this cliff, that's for sure. on our walk here as well. I've seen a number of dogs off the lead. I know I certainly wouldn't be doing that. I'd be keeping my dog or I am keeping Monty on the lead at all times. I just don't know sometimes what what they're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna pan round now. And this is both for the rock. So this is obviously been formed over millions and millions of years. You see the what is said to be the bow and fiddle. Or the bow, it's just there. This will be a lifeboat just skimming through the water as well. Want to see Monty! Oh, there is so many seagulls, so many smells that he's just not listening to me at all. Monty! Monty! Hello! Hello! Just came a little bit further down. You can see right through the archway of both of the rock just there. We're going to just walk a little bit further to see if we can get even a better view over this way. I'm going to head over to this path on the right hand side. There's people there just now. But yeah, we're going to get another view of both of the rock. Just to give you a bit of a marker as well, we have walked about four kilometres from where we parked to where we've now at both of the rock. Oh, Monty's now posing on the bench. 
you go for the bench. Up, 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 up. No, he's not. Yeah, we're gonna head back on the viaduct path now. So it's said that um, the Bofield rock is composed of quartzites, uh, which is a metaphoric rock, which is originally quartz sandstone. Um, so the rock was part of the Cullen quartzite formation, which is seen along the coast between Bucky and Cullen. So this direction is Bucky, and this over here, um, just above the cliff edge, is towards Cullen. And it sort of um, dates back to maybe anything from a thousand years to 539 million years ago. So the rocks were folded on ancient continents of Laurenta and Avelina Clyde during the Colonial Orangery. They originally exposed at the surface where sea and weather eroded. And you can sort of see the structure there today that that is what's left of it. Just discovered the sign of the rock as well. Sort of been on and off over the last 10 minutes, but yeah, it's now stopped. And um, just want to speak about this walk. So, I haven't done this walk for a number of years probably maybe five, six, maybe seven years ago. I had to sort of remind myself of the walk itself and where both of the rock actually was. But yeah, we found it eventually, and we're now going to head on to the main path, as I said earlier. Um, and sorry if this video has been a bit all over the place. As I said, I was sort of uh, wayfinding and sort of using a bit of Google Maps just to make sure I sort of didn't know where I was going to go. But yeah, we made it, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna head back. This is just a very much a quiet walk towards the the town. Uh, just a nice sort of footpath uh, that takes us up to the old train station or train line. So the train line from Cullen uh, went between Elgin and Aberdeen. So it operated between the Aberdeen and Elgin, as I said, and was opened in 1886. Um, but it was deemed that it had to close in 1968. Just make sure when you come to this point here that you take a left in the fork in the road rather than right because we are heading towards Cullen. And then when you come here, so the golf course is down on the right hand side with a view of the sea. And we're going to go this way, up to the right. So we've just came from the left hand side, coming around this way. We're going to, we're going to head this way and then round to the left. As you can see, I'll just when we come down these steps here, we'll see the train bridge where the train used to run between Elgin and Aberdeen between 1886 and 1968. And take note as well, this is a cycle path. So just imagine the train running towards Elgin and Aberdeen back in the 60s. So we've just made our way from this direction, turning around the golf course and Cullen itself. So the rain has just started. started. This looks to be the, the third green area. Heading towards uh, the Cullen Bay Hotel now. Do you remember playing golf here one year, probably when I was about 13, when we were visiting here for a weekend? So me and my cousin um, walked from the house to the, the golf course and yeah, we had an absolute shambles and we were awful at it. So you can walk on the golf course from this entrance here. We're not going to go this way, we're going to go this way. Uh, That's the Cullen Bay Hotel and the rain is starting to pour at the moment. So not ideal for filming. So that is the golf course and also Beach Car Park and this walled area here is the start of the viaduct which we're going to step on to any minute now. 
And this is the viaduct. So that is where we came from, which was part of the viaduct. And here's a trail walk here, one and three quarter miles to Portnoke, and this is towards content, content Centre. And there is a point of interest map here as well. I'll show you the numbers, and then the numbers on the actual map. But we're going to continue this way. Just thinking, it's quite hard to imagine this being a train line. It is so narrow, obviously, all the trees and the bushes and the grass is all overgrown to what it once was. But yeah, there's still remnants of what was maybe a train wall. This could have even, I guess, it'd be a platform somewhere along here, wherever the, the train station was. You can continue along the viaduct straight on. We're actually going to take a right just in a minute to head down into town centre again. Here's a view of the harbour and sea town. There's a, a nice bench here with a great view. And then looking back, we just came across there, the viaduct there. And then what a view of that house must have every single day. Look at that. We're gonna take a right down here. We can continue straight along along the viaducts. We're gonna take a right down here. And again you can go up this hill towards the town centre. We're actually gonna go under the um, viaduct itself which is just along under here onto the right, back onto the road. And we'll get a view of the town from the other side. So yeah, it just came from here. We're gonna head down these steps and back onto the main road. Okay, from these steps here. That is the road to Bucky, Sea Town, and we're gonna go up here. By the right hand side. So I spoke earlier about the Three Kings, which I thought was still a pub. I believe it was in that first building there. It looks like it's maybe converted into a house now. So yeah, it no longer exists as a restaurant. Just walking along the road, came across this shop as the outlet and look at that. Some sort of dinosaur on the top of it, off of its roof. But this is where we came from earlier on. So you can see the little train off in the distance there, the coloured plumber train. We headed down that way. And now we're gonna head back up. Under the viaduct now, towards the town centre. I'll point out a few different shops um, or takeaway points as well. If you've ever visited this thing, the shop here is a fish and chips. A bit too early in the morning for fish and chips. But yeah, absolutely love fish and chips here. Even a little dog bowl. Monty wants a drink. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Let's go further up. So we've been along the left hand side. I'm just going to go along the right hand side. This, this is the ice cream shop, one of the next shops on the right hand side. I wonder if it's open. Let's have a little look and see. Okay, it looks like it's open. We would have gone in. But um, we have a dog, so we're not going to go in, unfortunately. And then on the corner here is the Rockpool Cafe, which is this building here in green. Along this way is the local um, co-op shop and um, also be behind the trees off in the distance there is a house. It is a private residence and um, used to be a walk back in its day as well. But yeah just heading back along Seafield Street. The likes of the post office is up here, the pharmacy and then we are parked off to the left hand side just beyond uh, below the community centre and we're going to head back to the car now. Sort of um, beach toys available along some of these streets as uh, shops as well and then Stronix is here as well. So we've made it back to the car now and um, seem to be all weathers this walk it's now raining again it took us about an hour and 50 minutes to get from the car and down towards the harbour along the beach and um, along the cliff to the Bowfiddle Rock and back along the viaduct to the car and um, eight point eight and a half kilometres it took us um, in distance and yeah just under two hours we're going to head back home soon um, and get dried off, I think. This is the house I'm speaking about. So this is owned by my uncle. Um, and you, it is available to, to rent on Sykes Holiday Cottage website. 
uh, there's very many pictures of it. So um, just pointing out, this is a living room area. This is like another living room area. Uh, this room here is two single beds. This one here is two bunk beds. Um, two bunk beds again, and then a, a double bedroom. Behind this one is another d double bedroom. And then on this side, behind this room here, is a large um, bathroom. Above here is another uh, two single beds. In the landing, right at the, the third floor, is a table tennis table. And this one here is also a double bedroom. Um, there is another uh, toilet area, a to toilet room, behind one of these rooms here, and also behind this room as well. And this out, um, outbuilding here, this is like a games room, where there's a pool table, and yeah, you can play music and things like that as well. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye!